Hey guys, before we jump into today's show, it's a Ferg Friday. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer joins us, and also former Auburn Tiger Tyrone Truesdale joins us. But some news broke since recording that. Stop me if you've heard that before. I, I love the offseason. I really do, especially with the transfer portal. It makes it a lot more interesting because there's a ton of stories out there. But one thing we do not discuss, even though we do talk about the defensive front, is uh, Thursday afternoon, Romello Height, one of my favorite younger players on this roster, has put his name into the transfer portal. And obviously, very tall, not just because of his last name, but it's got a great frame, has a good first step. He just hasn't really seen much of an opportunity to play yet. And I think a lot of folks, myself included, thought, Thought we would possibly him in the starting lineup going into 2022. But Derek Hall and Eku Leota, we do have this conversation with Jay Ferg in a little bit. But those two guys come back. And I kind of wonder if Derek Hall's decision to do this has anything to do with that. Also, uh, Justin Hokuson with AuburnLive.com, his story um, about height entering the portal says that there is a chance that he could return to Auburn you can put your name in the portal and look around and then go back to the school, assuming they'll still have you. So just keep that in mind. I'm not putting a ton of stock into it, but if Hoke is saying it, there is some truth to it. So I, I think that's worth noting. But best of luck to Romello Height wherever he goes. I think he can be a really, really talented player. And if he wants to go to a situation where he will play more in 2022, I can say with confidence that he should be able to, to find that because I think he could be a really, really good player. Hate it's not going to be at Auburn unless maybe he comes back. Also, just a, a quick note. Looks like A-Day is April 9th. So Auburn put out a graphic on socials of important dates over the summer. A lot of them are camps and stuff, but A-Day, April 9th. So there you go. That'll be fun. Maybe. The few weeks leading up to it will be more fun. So we have we have all that to talk about. So, all right, Jay Ferg, coming up. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every Yes, day. welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer. Justin, there's a lot of hype going around with this Auburn basketball team right now, so I want to open up today's show, simple, true or false, Auburn basketball, perhaps the best team in the country. I'm leaning towards true. Um, I, I still think Baylor on their day might be better than Auburn. I like their balance a little bit more, a little bit more experience yeah. uh, coming off that national championship season. But I mean, Auburn's playing better basketball right now, um, and they have the best resume in college basketball. They are, I think, one of the deepest contenders, maybe the deepest contender in the country. And there's only a very few teams in college basketball that can say they have an elite offense and an elite defense, and Auburn's one of them. Um, so they got to take care of business on Saturday against Ole Miss. But, I mean, I, I think there's a really good chance that if they win and they win convincingly, you could see Auburn be number one in the country next next week for the first time in school history. Uh, I do wonder, though, how many people are going to be kind of keep Gonzaga ahead. This is the part of the season, though, when Gonzaga usually gets a little bit lower uh, in, in terms of um, what voters feel about them because they're about to run through the West Coast. Uh, right. And so, they're, you know, their big marquee games are pretty much done. Yeah, they don't play anybody again until the tournament. That's just no. Yeah, that's just how it is. Right. Yep. Right. Right. The I was talking with the Locked on Ole Miss host. We were just kind of chit chatting yesterday and he's like, Look, Auburn is a way better team than Ole Miss, but there's always something about this game where, like, yep. Ole Miss basketball has been able to beat Bruce Pearl. I mean, this mm -hmm. is this game tomorrow has a lot of the makings of a potential trap game for the Tigers. Oh yeah, it's it's one of the biggest possible trap games if you if you buy into that that definition. That right. There is just because of what's at stake, right? Like I said, if you win. Chance you could be number one in the country for the first time ever. Really good chance you're going to be number two at the very minimum. Um, and Ole Miss is in is Ole Miss is a team that they've lost. The teams they've lost to this season, for the most part, have been pretty good. Um, but they're in a, they're in a bit of a rut right now. Uh, they just lost their leading scorer for uh, maybe the next two months. Uh, they might try to get him back by the end of the season. Yeah. Um, they've had another big injury that's that's affected them this year. They're coming off a game against Texas A and M 
where they couldn't score and then they look pretty soft on defense. And they're not a great offensive team this season, especially with some of the weapons they have out. But they play really good defense. I think on paper, this game is very similar to what Auburn got at South Carolina. And we saw in that game, South Carolina did something they didn't do, hadn't done all year, which is hit the three um, and, and hit some contested shots really, really well. That's going to be kind of the same thing. You're in the pavilion. You're in, uh, you know, hostile territory. Um, and, and Ole Miss is going to be more familiar shooting in that environment. So, yeah, it is it is a trap game. And, and I, I subscribe to the belief that in SEC play, especially on the road, you get these wins by any means necessary. You win by one or 20 or 50. really doesn't matter. You just got to get the win and keep keep it moving just because of the depth and the, of this league. And like you said, you know, Kermit Davis has had more success against Bruce Pearl than pretty much any other coach in college basketball um, on, a, on a regular basis. And this dates right. back to, to before the Auburn Ole Miss uh, era for these two guys. Um, it, it is kind of like – it is kind of like Gus being the guy to trip up uh, Nick Saban as often as he did compared to everybody else and compared sure. his own record compared to everybody else. Right. Yeah. So th this is definitely not a gimme game. No, no. As Auburn travels there. Didn't realize Oxford was three hours from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I just, that just didn't, that still doesn't really make sense in my brain, but we'll see. I mean, there's been so much talk about this fan base traveling. So yeah. well, especially, you know, with, with Bruce making a big deal about it in Tuscaloosa, but you may see a lot of Auburn folks in Oxford and I've never been to Oxford, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's a great place to go and visit yeah. and spend a weekend. So we yeah. may see some, uh, we may see a lot of Auburn folks out there. It's supposed to snow this weekend in Oxford. So if you're going, uh, keep, keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be really, really cold and, and they get some of that snow that's blowing in from the Midwest. Um, yeah, this, this is a really good trip for Auburn fans, especially if you are, living in Birmingham or living West Alabama, or if you live, you know, obviously much closer to, to Mississippi and West yeah. Tennessee, like you, you, this is a really good time to go down. It's a whole lot cheaper to go to an Auburn road game than it is to a Harbor, Auburn home game this year. I mean, that's just to kind of just the facts of it. And yeah, the um, uh, Ole Miss is a fun time. A uh, lot of great places to eat. And like the pavilion was built, uh, their new arena was built kind of like with Auburn arena in mind. Like it is very similar in kind of the, the structure um, and so it is a, it is a nice newer venue in SEC basketball. Right. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens there, but it's just been incredible to see this team. I mean, the storylines going into the season, Jay Ferg, and, and you and I talked about it. You guys talked about it over the Auburn observer a ton, but yeah, it's like, okay, give this team some time to gel and come together. Like they may lose a few games that they're not supposed to. That mm. has not happened yet nope. at all. No, nope. and like, is there any part of you where like, okay, it's coming, or is that part of the growth of this team, the development of this team? Is that behind us already? Yeah, I, I think there's just there are games that they're going to lose probably, and like right now they're projected on Kim Palm and other places to go fifteen and three in the SEC, which is enough to win the league by two games. Um, right, that's an insane record. And so it's like the way Auburn's playing right now, I, you hear me say, yeah, they probably are projected to lose three games from here on. And it's like, that sounds like a lot because of how, what they've done, but like, no, that is an, an insanely good record. Um, I, I think, I think there's a, there's a lot about this team that it still is in the growing phase, right? This is not a team that has played a ton together as a, as a, um, as a lineup. And I had a question on coming back. Right, exactly. I I, yeah. I had uh, I had a question in my mailbag last week about like, is this team peaking too early? I was like, I don't think they've peaked because we have not seen them at full strength yet. We haven't seen them at full strength, and they're still doing some things like still trying to figure out uh, half court offense a little bit and executing in that. Even though they did an excellent job, especially in the second half against Florida of, of taking care of business. This has been a great defensive team from beginning to end this season. But right. yeah, they're still they're still trying to work some things out. Uh, but the depth and the balance that they've got is that. You know, not everybody's got to be in concert with one another. Everybody's not going to be like playing their best basketball for them to win games, right? I think at Alabama is a good example. Nobody had a bad game, but some guys stepped up more than others. And of course, Kessler being in foul trouble opened the door for Dylan Carwell to have a big night. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think this team is peaking yet because I think this team is continuing to grow. I think they just had a talent level and a depth level that few teams in college basketball can match. 
So they are already ahead of the curve compared to pretty much everybody in the country, save for the Baylors and the Dukes and the Gonzagas and, and you know, uh, other teams like that across college basketball. Right, yeah. The, the dynamic that I think Bruce Pearl is best at, and he's good at so many different elements of being a head coach and leading a program, but consistently his teams at Auburn peak at the end of the season. Right. I mean, even, yeah. you know, like his first year when they beat LSU in the tournament, the SEC tournament, or obviously the final four run, they peaked late. Even with a Coro's year before COVID canceled everything. They were, um, they were, they were hot right at the they end. They were hot going into the SEC tournament. And yeah, I kind of feel it with this team. Last year, I think, you know, you can just scratch off with, you know, yeah. not counting. But, you know, this year, I kind of get the same thing. I mean, there's so many sloppy things that happen, like, Weird passes below the basket in the Alabama game and still just wasted possessions and, you know, just people making, you know, silly, ill-advised passes. And you're going to get part of that with the way Bruce Pearl wants to play basketball. And it's a bunch of amateur basketball players playing. <laughs> like, sure. Right. That's the other thing, yeah. But there's just so much to clean up. And then obviously free throws. I don't fully understand why they're struggling from the charity stripe as much as they are. But, yeah. um, you know, you clean up those things just a little bit and Auburn blows teams out of the water. Yeah, I mean, and, and if they're not in foul trouble as much against against Alabama, you know, Bama doesn't even have a chance to come back into that game, right. right? And those are things you can't fully control. You can't fully control the way games are – like Walker Kessler, up until this week, had been the premier shot blocker in college basketball, and he had done, I mean, better than pretty much any disruptive defender in the country at avoiding fouls. He had so many blocks and steals without getting fouled, and now he's fouled out in back-to-back -back games. That is just inconsistent officiating, and you've got to adjust to that, and you've got to do better with that. But even still, they've been able to overcome those things. Um, you know, you talk about free throws. You know, you have uh, away from home, Jabari missing, going 0 for 2 on, on a trip. KD going 0 for 2 on a trip. But then down the stretch, Alan Flanagan knocks the bottom out of four of them. Right. You know, money, like just ice cold free throws to, to, to win the game. So, you know they they have an ability to kind of work themselves out of these of these things, and they they finish really really well in games. I think that's kind of the defining characteristic. We've seen it in all four SEC wins. There have been runs, and then Auburn finishes well. Now this Alabama one was the closest anybody's come to knocking them off, mm -hmm. but I mean it was so surprising to me. Think about it. This team is still learning how to play with one another at full strength. They're on the road, and Alabama's the team that looks like they have no idea what they're doing on offense in the final minutes, yeah. not Auburn. And, and so that, that says a lot about the way this team is, is built in this way, the way that uh, Bruce Pearl and his staff have been coaching them up. They have a ton of confidence at the end of games and that's not confidence that is necessarily automatic. Even if you're as, as talented as this roster is right No, there's a lot to like, no question about it. Hey, want to tell you just real quick, about this awesome free app. It's called Get Upside. Um, you can save money every time you fill up at the pump. Just download the Get Upside app. It's free in your phone's app store. Use promo code SCORE, and you can save up to 50 cents per gallon on your first fill up, and then after that, 25 cents cash back every time you fill up at the pump. And so there are folks using this app that drive a ton, and they're getting two or $300 back a month. There's no cap on this. Uh, by just using this free Get Upside app, and you can see the 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 cash in your account in the app, and you can move it to your bank account. You can move it to your PayPal. You can deposit and get e gift cards from popular stores and 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 websites. So, download it today. Just search Get Upside in your phone's app store and use that promo code SCORE. Also, today's show brought to you by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is the best place on the interwebs to uh, to gamble and to you know. Make your predictions. Put the money where your mouth is with any kind of sport. They even have things outside of sports if that is interesting to you. So use promo code Locked On when you make your first deposit. You'll get a free 50% bonus on that deposit. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. It is a Ferg Friday. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer, our guest, as he is every Friday. What, um, what are folks missing out on if they are not subscribed to the Auburn Observer? whole lot of basketball right now uh, yeah. and, and some football. We're keeping track of all the um, moving parts with the roster and the and guys coming back and the transfers and, and all that with on the football side. But, yeah, it's 
a lot of basketball. The mailbag came out today, pretty much almost exclusively basketball questions, which is pretty fun at this time of year. So if you want to dive deeper with Auburn hoops right now, um, go, come to the observer uh, with post-game observations, uh, film rooms, breakdowns of a lot of, uh, a lot of details of, of this team. Cause you know, they are at a point right now where they look like one of the best in college basketball. And uh, I think Auburn fans, um, there, there may be some newer Auburn basketball fans out there. Some folks that might not be as familiar or as comfortable with right. the, with the game. Um, you know, we're, we're trying, we're trying to teach and, uh, and, and, and give you a lot of insight on the, on the X's and O's and the stats, uh, at the observer. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Let's pivot to football. And in mm -hmm. just a moment, um, I will sit down and chat with Tyrone Truesdale, which is a bit random, former Auburn Tiger transferred to Florida this past season. Surprisingly interesting conversation. So stick around. Um, for that, he had some some cool and interesting things to to say. But Jay Ferg yesterday on the show with the news of Eculiota coming back, which I don't know if he needed an announcement, but I'm glad he did it, and I'm glad he did it. I, here, he so here's what ball game started. So here here's my thing: if you are draft eligible and um and you could leave or and you say you come back, like I I want every player to do that because like the the amount of support and the amount of love that you get from the fan base when you, mm -hmm. that's got to feel so good. And it's like, even yeah. though you're not a clear cut NFL, like I, it, I'm all for it, man. Like just go ahead and hammer it home. And it's, it's easy PR for the football program as well. Sure. I think they're being staggered out for a reason. I think the fact that they didn't all have a big rush at the beginning, it also helps us, keeps us with more stuff to talk about and write about. To, that's to true as well. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Instead so like when I saw that one day, it's like, no, yeah. give me a week to talk about this guy coming back first. Yeah. That's a good so, point. It, so like when I saw Eku um, making the announcement to come back, it's like, heck yeah, man, go ahead. Go ahead. He had an awesome year. And like, you know, right. let, let some Auburn fans show him some love because uh, yeah. I think he's going to be a key part of what they do next season. Right. Right. I just, I wish he didn't do it right when the Auburn Alabama basketball game started. It's like, man, you've got so much more attention if you just wait right. until the morning. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a good point. But yeah, it's, um, it, it, there's a lot of dudes coming back right now. And it, it's, it's, yeah. it's funny because, you know, there was a rush, I think, from some folks when Auburn had those guys enter the portal early and some other transfers. And, you know, you have the big moves like the Bo Nix and, and then what happened with Kobe Hudson. And it's like, if there, you can hit the panic button if, if 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 you can't you can hit the panic button if you're not feeling confident um and it's really easy to do that but the number of guys who are coming back on both sides of the ball right now i think you know i don't know how this is all going to work out in 2022 there's a lot of work auburn has to has to get done in order to be a team like they want to be like this program right. wants to be there's a lot of work to be done but i think it is very telling that i mean there are guys coming back and um you know they are buying into what Brian Hartson and his staff are selling. And that says a lot because these players are with these guys more than anybody else. They have a better read and a better feel of what's really going down than us, than any other fan, than any other media member. No, you're, you're right about that. You're absolutely right about that. So uh, I'm with you though. Eku got better as the season went on. I think people, yeah. forget, even though he was the first guy to like commit to Auburn through the transfer portal, he, he wasn't a part of spring. And so he yep. was kind of, you know, drinking through the fire hose, as they say, um, and catching up, and, you know, when, when fall camp started. And you usually see players like that get better as the season goes on because yeah. they haven't been around as long, which he, is what happened. But he, he um, was leading in sacks until the Iron Bowl. And then Derek's, Derek's big day passed him. He was, right. he was Auburn's kind of go-to guy there early. But I made the take yesterday that with the return of, Eku and and Hall, mm -hmm. Auburn could have one of the best pass rushing tandems in the conference in 2022. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially I, yeah. with the support of like what they're going to get on the inside with yep. you know the attention that that Kobe Wooden takes up and the attention of maybe a guy like Jason Jones or Marquise Burks, whoever's going to be that bigger guy on the inside. Marcus you Harris. Yeah, yeah. Marcus. You can't double anybody, and so yep. all of those guys move pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um. I think it's really going to benefit Auburn on the defensive edge. Yeah, I wrote about it earlier this week at the Observer, but this Auburn defensive front averaged more sacks per game than any other Auburn offensive line since all since going or defensive line since 2009. And I'm throwing the edge rushers and the line in together, but basically, right. not inside linebackers, not defensive backs. If you add up the sacks from the guys that are the dedicated rushers, um, you go all the way back to 2009 where the the really detailed stats are kept. Um, the, 
the Nick Fairley year, the 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 D Ford year, the Jeff Holland year, the wow. the Marlon Davidson and Derek Brown years, they didn't average as many sacks as a game as a unit as this one did because there's just so many different pieces. Pretty much everybody's coming back. You lose TD Moultrie, you lose uh, you lose a couple other guys, but like this team is uh, this unit is deep, and I've said it before, but. The way to overcome some rebuilding things on the at linebacker and in the secondary is have a really good defensive front. And I, they're also really good at stopping the run. But football, we saw it in the national championship game as well. The, 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 the more you can get after a quarterback and affect the passing game uh, by committing just only four guys and then dropping seven, like you can do so much with that. Uh, especially if you're in a scheme like Derek Mason's where they mix and match and move things around so much. So, um, you know, there's, a, like I said, a lot of work to be done for Auburn to be a really good team in 2022, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But a defense that can win up front, that uses, that's usually the key to success in the SEC. It's crucial. It's absolutely crucial. And uh, I like that you said that with, it's going to help the these young defensive backs or these, you know, new defensive backs coming in. Obviously, mm-hmm. a pass rush helps, but... Yeah, I mean, even when Auburn had really good defenses, elite defenses under Kevin Steele, there was still all this talk of like, okay, they're really good, but like they're not turning it over and they're not getting sacks. They're just forcing three and out after three and out. But like, and then we would always kind of curb the conversation of, okay, well, the defensive line, the pass rush is impacting the play. They're just not getting the sack, but Mm -hmm. they actually got home a a bit more this past season. So no, I think it's good that you uh, you pointed that out. That's that's yeah. Pressure rate's really, really important, but sack rate is as well because it's the best way to pressure a quarter uh, a play is to just end it right there and don't yeah, put you it up. Throw it if the play is over, right? Yeah, you're losing yards. Um, and so it's it was a really good it was a really good year for Auburn's defensive front. Um, I would expect that to continue. Interested to see what Auburn does in terms of their defensive line coach. Uh, but I thought Burt Watts did a, a great job with his outside linebackers this year. Sure. And I think I think that those. Whoever the next guy is, Nick Easton did a really good job working in tandem. That is a group that did a lot of mixing and matching and and, and a lot of uh, moving around. And so I would expect Auburn to kind of go back to that same formula, go back to the same blueprint. Year two, more experience. You could expect some good things out of that front next year. Justin Ferguson, if folks want to sign up for the Auburn Observer, how can they do that? Uh, AuburnObserver.com. Type in your email. It'll give you instructions. Uh, $6 a month or $60 a year gets you access to everything we got going on. So, Mailbags, film rooms, everything written wise, uh, we do that uh, behind the paywall, and we do a premium podcast. Uh, we went uh, long on our one this week about the uh, the Auburn basketball game uh, against right. Alabama, and uh, we'll have stuff over the weekend if you want to uh, if you want to see the dispatch from Oxford and and the podcast from that uh, AuburnObserver.com. Sign up there. Cool, awesome. That is Justin Ferguson joining us as he does every week for Ferg Friday. Hey, today's show brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best protein bar on the planet. All the bars, very high in protein, very low in calories, very low in sugar, uh, but covered in pure, delicious chocolate. So be sure to check out all of what they have going on at Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That is at Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off Built.com. And joining us now for a few minutes, Tyrone Truesdale, defensive lineman, former Auburn Tiger, former Florida Gator, now uh, working out for folks uh, on NFL front offices with the College Gridiron Showcase this week. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Good, man. Good deal. Well, um, pleasure to chat with you for uh, for a few minutes. So what are kind of some things that you're working on with your game? How are workouts going as you kind of prep for this next level? Uh, right now, uh, everything been going good. I'm I've been training just uh, right now, just uh, focusing on uh, trying to lose some, lose a few pounds and really? trim up some and focus on like uh, combine stuff, like uh, stuff I do like for my pro day and stuff just gotcha. to get me ready. How many, uh, how many reps of 225 you think you're going to be able to get up? Uh, see, that's what I can't wait to do. So okay. just uh, right now, uh, without the technique and stuff, I can probably get it at least 28 times. Oh, man. Uh, but right now I'm working on the uh, fundamentals, getting that down packing stuff and really 
I, I, I shoot, once I get that down, I should be able to do it at least 35, 40. 40. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. No, you're you've always been a strong player. There's no question about it. Yeah, I would imagine showing off strength and then um, short quickness and short bursts would be kind of the, the biggest things that you want to show, right? You know, that, that 10 yard shuttle, maybe like a three cone just to show that you can kind of get off and, and move with power. Is that kind of, is that kind of like your, your biggest things? Uh, yes. Yes. That's uh, my biggest attributes that I want to uh, show, show the people, let people see uh, the quickness and the speed, uh, what separates me from a lot of guys and just try to really just go out go out and really just get some uh good put some good stuff out there yeah for sure good measurables and stuff yeah that makes sense as far as uh as far as scheme and how you use at florida and and you know your, your role at auburn as well how do you think that specifically helps you at the next level uh at the next level uh you can repeat that question for me just, just you know, how you were used in in the scheme of two different defenses and two different programs. Um, does does that help you as far as you know preparing for the next level? Uh, it, it actually does because yeah. what what it shows is uh, can can you adapt to the environment that you're in? Can you right. be be the guy that if they need you to do this, even though you haven't done it and you used to something else, can you come in and pick up this scheme? Uh, so I feel as though one thing that teams are going to realize is I can come in, I can learn learn what they want me to do and execute it exactly how they want me to execute it. Uh, I showed it uh, just coming into Florida uh, the way I did, the way I stayed in the, uh, in the film room and uh, studying the plays, the, the way I was able to pick up on everything uh with so much little time uh it really showed uh what i'm capable of so as a defensive lineman when you're watching the film what specifically are you looking at i know that's probably an open-ended question but are you looking specifically at you know what guards do in certain situations or I'm, okay you know if, if when i'm looking at it I, I i start off with i work my way from the center and then go out okay so I go off the center since he the first person who touches the ball. I'm I'm watching him. I want to see do he give off any uh signs of like where the ball going, how he set up Tendency the tendencies uh, type yeah. stuff. Once yeah. I get, and then I go from like if it's teams that he um played how he did against uh other other guys that lined up in front of him. And from that point, I just go from inside and just work my way out uh, to the guards, then to the tackles. Uh, and then after that, I go to the quarterback and running back, see how they set up and stuff. And then I even go to the point where uh, uh, looking at the wide receivers and the tight ends. And, really? Okay. Yeah, just the, because the more that you look at film and the more you study uh, all 11 guys, the better you are. The more you can pick up, the uh, better student you are to the game. Is there a team that gave you, I don't say more trouble than others, but you had to put more time into as far as preparation while you were in the SEC? One that kind of stands above the others? Uh, one that uh, that uh, that I have always played uh, every year that actually made me really feel as though. Uh, like you really have to catch on to some of their uh, tendencies. You have to probably look at a uh, lot more is uh, Alabama, mm -hmm. just because like fundamentally they are sound. It's right. hard to find them little things that can show show what they do because they got like the some great players who, of course, uh, they don't really uh, have like little tendencies that they do you just have to really go out there and play them right but and find some then like you like it it can benefit you in a lot of ways no question yeah. really, like those are the only like they probably like the only team where 
I really have to really focus and lock lock in to uh, guess what they're doing. Mm -hmm. no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And they win a lot. And that's that's definitely why. So um, a lot of athletes right now, I think I read the other day, it's like over 1,200 players currently are in the transfer portal. You went through that process a year ago. What exactly goes through your mind once you enter the portal and say, hey, okay, other teams, other coaches, I'm available. How quick do folks start reaching out to you? How quick does all this process kind of get going? Well, it it depends on like when I did it, I kind of went out on the on the whim of just going off of like it's got to be like me being who I am. Somebody's gonna take me. Uh, yeah. Like everybody has their own reasons for putting their name out there for different reasons. Uh, but the one thing that I can say is uh, when you once you, most people who put their name out there. Nine times out of ten, they already got an idea of somewhere where they could end up. Like nobody's putting their name out there without having some type of idea of some type of college to go to. Like it, it's always a plan to it. And before I put my name in that, I had to come up with a plan. Uh, for my first thing was once I did it, I just started uh, reaching out to some of my coaches back home, like my high school coaches and stuff. Like you just because you basically go back through the recruiting process when you right. do, and now you have to do what you did to uh, when you was in high school. Now that's what you got to do uh, as far as finding a, uh, another place to call home. Uh, so, so how long were you in the portal before Florida reached out? Um, I think like a day or two. Okay. Because you made your decision pretty quick, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so with me, uh, when I did it, uh, like I, it's basically like I said, I had like a plan in mind with it. Uh, it kind of weighed on me a lot before I did it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I made sure that I had a plan in mind. Uh, and when I did it, I didn't know that Florida was going to, be one of the schools i actually didn't think i would have got in the sec school because it was so late in the year right so i wasn't even looking at uh sec school but when i uh when it started uh they reached out to me a few other schools and uh some schools in the pac 12 and it ultimately came down to florida or oregon where i would have ended up at okay interesting um, during your, your short stint, um, playing for Harson, coach Harson at Auburn, how big of a difference was it playing for him or I guess practicing for him versus the, the previous regime playing for, uh, for Gus? Uh, I mean, the only difference, uh, that I say, cause I mean, they both kind of have like the same philosophy uh work hard and uh always uh being a, a student uh student of the game and also uh having uh morals as far as uh going to class being on time to thing like right. those are some of the things that they both have in common mm -hmm. and it was just like honestly it, it it really felt like it was the same like i ain't I ain't really noticed too much of a difference other than uh like of course uh it's new coaches, new it's uh new relationships you have to build. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well Tyrone, hey man, really appreciate your time. It means a ton. Thank you for everything you did at Auburn and of course uh cheering you on uh as you work towards uh this next step and and hopefully hopefully you catch some eyes at the College Gridiron Showcase, man. And uh like I said, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, that does it for today's show. Thank you so much for Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer. Thank you so much for uh, former Auburn Tiger Tyron Truesdale stopping by the show for a few minutes. We appreciate both of those guys. We'll be back on Monday to recap the weekend right here on Locked on Auburn.